Thanks so much for joining and, us. And, you know, as, as I do this all the time, uh, I've been doing this for five years, and that one thing that just happened has never happened. It's, so this is the fun. We, we talked about this earlier. What did we say to each other? That, that we're going to have fun with this. We're going to have and fun. Hopefully teach you guys a lot of social media basics that are will help you take your social media strategy to that next level in 2021. Yeah, and we're going to give ourselves grace, and we're going to move through this. So what we're doing today, we're live in a Facebook event that uh, we can invite people to. We could actually advertise. So we put some ad money behind this to get out to more people. And we're live in the event. Now, what's cool about this and what we'll talk about later, probably not in this broadcast and a future broadcast, is you can actually now with Facebook's new stuff actually make this a paid event. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. And only limit this to people you want to come in to get paid. When COVID hit, Facebook's like, how do we allow people to make some more money because they're stuck at home? And this is a way, and me and Katie are actually testing this feature out today. Um, but if you're just joining us live or you're happy to see this in the replay, uh, my name is Danny Colella. I'm a Facebook Live video marketing expert, coach, and consultant. Facebook Live is my game. It's my thing. It's my passion. <laughs> and my co-host today. I'm Katie Brinkley with Next Step Social Communications, and I'm a social media strategist who helps entrepreneurs, small businesses, and experts in the home industry take their social media to that next step, get new leads, new engagement, and new customers through the power of social media. Yeah, so we make a pretty good team. I like to do video, which is crucial to the ecosystem, and she it's, likes to do everything marketing that has to do with, like, how are you going to be effective? What are you doing? Is it working? What should you be doing? So we hope to we hope to add a lot of value today, right? Yeah, this and like you said, video is king. Video is so important as part of your social media strategy. If you can mm -hmm. put video out, that is going to boost you on all every single social media channel mm. tremendously. So that's one of the things that we're going to highlight during today's live session, um, just the power of social of video on your social media. Yeah, and, and we are live today, which is the fun of this all, that we get to actually engage with some of you. So we have Jenna Ogden says hello, John Davis says hi, CJ Ives Lopez, hey Katie, good to see you all. And Claudette Ling is saying hi from Minnesota. Awesome. So welcome to you all. We are gonna, we're gonna throw up on you today. Let's just be <laughs> honest. We're gonna teach you a lot. We don't expect you to retain it all, but both of us have been wildly successful using social media, and we're going to talk about the things that we hear from people and from our clients, and we're going to give you some insight on how to move through and how to how to make decisions, because what we know about our own business is we tend to get into analysis paralysis, right? Yes. Like we think so hard about everything that we do nothing, and we want to break you out of some of that today with giving you some information, and one of the, the first things we decided we were going to talk about today is something that you hear a lot. Of. I and hear why this, don't you explain what it is you hear? Yeah, the thing that I hear all the time is social media has not worked for me or mm -hmm. my business. It it doesn't bring in any new clients or new leads. Mm -hmm. And th it's one of the, the things that breaks my heart the most because it's mm -hmm. such a powerful tool and it allows you to make connections with people that you might have never even thought about connecting with. And if you can do it through your business, mm -hmm. that's just going to really take your business to the next level. And again, with 2020 and what we've seen through the online space, if you can connect with people in different states, different countries through social media, it's going to bring in new clients and new leads and new customers for you. So that is one of the biggest things that I hear is people saying that it doesn't work for their business or their brand. And it's just because they're not doing it the right way. There is no strategy behind no. their social media. They're they're They know they need to post something. So they just quick post a quick picture of their dog. But really, how does that have anything to do with it if you're a home organizer. They're accidentally on purpose. Exactly. Exactly. And I've been there. We're not we're not we're not pointing fingers. <laughs> We've all been there, but you're accidentally on purpose, right? Exactly. And that's and that's one of the things that I think people struggle with. They're like, oh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not getting any new clients or, or new leads through social media. But it's because there's no strategy behind it. So mm -hmm. I think that that is one of the things that if when you create a content calendar and set aside time every week to craft your social media strategy. What are you going to post? What are you going to say? Um, what, and, and say, okay, every Wednesday, I'm going to go live. Um, or every you know Tuesday, I'm going to do a virtual walkthrough of a just listed house that I have. So these are different ways that you can set aside that time and know, like, instead of just jumping in and be like, oh my gosh, I haven't posted on Instagram for like three weeks. What should I do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've all been there. And, you know, we want to know what kind of businesses we're working with in this workshop today. Uh, so if you are so in inclined, we want to hear, what's your business? What are you in? Are you a realtor? Are you in, uh, do, do you sell an item? Do you sell a thingy? Do you sell a service? 
what it what is it that you do and we hope that if you put in the comment section what it is that you do maybe we can give you a little bit of extra guidance today since you are joining us live and not in the replay so drop in the comments what it is what's your business um, and if you want to drop your Facebook page do that as well and then maybe even after this me and Katie can kind of go in check it out yeah, and maybe give to. you a little bit of advice after this all so um, yeah. we're gonna hop right into content today we talked about you saying social media doesn't work for you but what we know is most people aren't using it the right way right exactly um you might not be using the platform the right way you might not be knowing what platform you need to be on what kind of advice do you have some people that are feeling that way well and that, that's one of the most common things that i see is that people try to be on every social media platform known to mankind mm -hmm. and um, when you're on every single mat you know social media platform you try to be the master of all then you're the master of none um mm -hmm. and every single social media platform is out there for a different audience. Yeah. If you can go and figure out who your ideal client is, who your ideal customer is, it's going to help you tremendously with, with what kind of messaging you're gonna put out, what time you should post, um, sure. you know, as your audience mostly men. You know, mm -hmm. try and steer the conversation you know, to more of a man type of writing. Mm -hmm. um, and, th and that's one of the things that I see a lot of people doing is they're just posting in the same thing on every single social media channel and expecting just the, the, yeah. the calls and the phone to ring off the hook. I did it. And, Where's it at? I yeah, did it. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things is go in on like two or three social media channels and mm -hmm. give it your all. Um, do it the right way and engage correctly on those platforms. And you're really going to see a, a huge return on investment um, because your content is going to be better. It's not just going to be copy and pasted. Uh, you know, amongst Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many out there and they all exist for a reason. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're tailoring your, your channel, your, your content for each channel um, and, and to the audience that's on each channel. Yeah, and we're going to go over even some of the demographics to help you understand where you should be. So what I have found, especially with working a lot of people with video, is they don't even know who their, their core target audience is, which I'm not laughing because I dealt with that as well. Um, but who is it that you're trying to connect with? Now, when I work with people, um, we had some comments come in. Uh, Law Form, 31, Miranda's Toad, Extravaganza and More, uh, Sister, The Sister Show, Motivational Speaker, Full time, I work for a nonprofit. Um, so let's use for today's purpose the law firm, Laura Pallid. We're going to work with you today, real quick, okay? So essentially, your law firm, like I'm sure you solve a fair amount of problems, right? Um, without even saying what you do or what you don't do, for the purpose of the content, I'm going to say that you're in you're in family law. You deal with family law. Now, obviously, you can help a man. Obviously, you can help a woman. There's what's what's crazy about this is there's a lot of people you can help, but what's not affected is when we just kind of blanket everything. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, we help men. No, you a woman, we help women. Um, uh. You got to pick a lane. And I don't, I'm not saying you got to stay in it, but mm -hmm. if you want a man to recognize that you're there to help them or help them through something or they're coming up on a, a moment in life where they're going to need you, you got to make content that's for that man. And it may be that your strategy is, okay, for the first quarter of 2021, we're, we know we've been getting a lot of women clients. So for the first quarter of 2021, we're going to make content that's tailored towards our women client. Okay. And not just our women client, because I like to take this even one step further. We all know those people that we love to work with, right? They just, they come in and we're just like, okay, we're doing our job. This is great. I love it. This is why I do this. Thank God. I even say, let's talk to that person. Let's try to get that person through the door. What is she want to hear what yes. it, what would really what would really make her feel like okay uh, I'm not happy to be where I'm at but if I have to make a decision I might consider here mm -hmm. and it's not stopping there that's why I say your first quarter just because you did something once and you connected with her I want you to start thinking about how you consume content because I forget about it in an hour yeah I forget about it in an hour it might have affected me but then I move on it will, and this is the thing too is you want to make sure that you're speaking to each client or each ideal customer on specifically for each platform. So let's you, this is where knowing what you have, like if you have a Facebook business page um, or a, an Instagram business page, you can see so many insights through these accounts mm -hmm. and see who's on each platform, who's listening, who's following, um, mm -hmm. who's engaging the most. And w from there, you can craft each message for each platform. Mm -hmm. So again, let's say that you have a really strong female audience on Instagram um, and they're, they're really active, they're really engaged. 
But then on Facebook, it's, it's predominantly men in their, their 40s and 50s. You're going to have different content that you can push out for each of those channels so that you're going to where your audience is and providing them value. That mm-hmm. is one of the biggest things is I see so many small businesses and, and entrepreneurs and, and, and realtors just, and, and that's all that they do is, is talk about themselves the whole mm-hmm. time. And you have to remember, it's called social media for a reason. Yeah. It's meant to be social. Um, and just, just try and be authentic with your audience and, and give them value when they come to your page. Mm-hmm. Um, again, going back to the law firm, there's so many different ways that you could connect with them just b- besides doing the stock imagery. Um, you know, go through there and like on, on LinkedIn, this mm-hmm. is a great way for you to promote your, yourself as a thought leader in, for your law firm and provide value to your followers in LinkedIn. So sharing relevant articles, sharing a story of, of somebody's um, success story. And then on, on Instagram, you can give that kind of behind the scenes look of, well, this is what we do uh, for our clients. This is our, our sit down. You know, here we are having coffee with our clients. Give mm-hmm. them that intimate feel with where you, you what, how it's like to work with you. So that way, down the line, maybe your, your followers aren't, follow, you know, needing your services right now, but someday they will because they feel like they know you. They feel like you're a friend. They know, like, and trust you. Yeah, totally. And, and and one of the last things we had on here to talk about in this section was, you know, we want, we want, obviously I'm a Facebook Live video marketing expert. Both of us understand the power of video in general. Um, I think you should be going live. I know most of you are like, uh, Danny, back down a little. Uh, no way am I hitting that button. I've seen other people do it so bad, <laughs> ain't happening. And I'm okay. You're okay with that, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull you here one little piece at a time. But what we do know is that people do prefer video. People do prefer to learn video. Um, one of the ways of being successful on social media is a simple thing that we call stop the scroll. Are you stopping the scroll? Are you getting people to make a consideration, even if it's the first touch, for a half a second? Yeah. Are they stopping for a half second? You know what? It may not feel like a success, but that is a success. And the consistency that you're going to keep going means that maybe in a week they're going to see it again and they're going to stop for a second. Mm-hmm. And the point is your consistency is going to continue to show up for that person and you're going to start to see it. And when it's video, you have the ability to start allowing them to just hit the button and then learn about what it is you're trying to say. And as Katie said, this has to be value driven. You are here and your business exists. Correct me if I'm I'm wrong. Your business exists to solve a problem. It does. There's a problem the world is having, a need that they have, something that they don't even know they need. I saw 31 bags. I know 31 bags. Those things are freaking amazing. And there are people out there that don't know they need this tri uh, compartment duffel bag that they can carry. And there's probably (laughs) reasons why they need it. And they count on you to show them how. And it isn't just a picture because it isn't going to stop them anymore. And, you know, one thing I want to break from you. So so I'm going to throw down the hammer on myth number one. Um, Myth number one is you just need to consistently post. Myth number one is I just need to post two of my personal pictures and then one business post a week and I'm nailing it, right? Uh, That was okay maybe five to seven years ago, but you were not there right now. No. And and that's one of the things you said too is I I see so many people going – I, I got to post every day on social media and I just, I can't do it. That's why, you know, mm-hmm. and again, posting value three times a week. That's where, you know, I try and work with a lot of my clients and just, okay, let's just focus on three things a week, three mm-hmm. ways that you can provide value to your clients and customers. Mm-hmm. And that's, what's really going to help you st- again, stop the scroll. Mm-hmm. Another thing that you mentioned too, is video is the, one of the highest ranks on the algorithm. Huge. Um, if you can go live through Facebook, like we are, or Instagram, or, or LinkedIn now, it's going to help you because people, your audience is spending more time on the platform. And mm-hmm. just like anything else, Facebook wants you to spend as much time as possible on there. So watching mm-hmm. video, they instantly say, ah, we got to put them up high. Yeah. We want, we want people to see this because people will spend more time on our platform watching this video. And I want to highlight on that exact point that you made. Uh, You know, whether you believe it or not, Facebook cares immensely. All (laughs) platforms care immensely 
on the experience on their platform. You know, you may think that they don't, but they care about the time that you spend, how long you spend there. In fact, Facebook is even okay with people spending less time on their platform as long as the time that they spend there is meaningful. What they do know is that if we pre-recorded this, okay, and we, we just put this out and we just played this, you all are less likely to comment, engage, like, be a part of this broadcast. But the fact that we're live you're a part of this, right? You're a part of the community. We're all in this together. We're going through and seeing more of these business. We got more people hopping in full time. I work a nonprofit, focusing on youth development. Uh, new dot color street stylist. We got an amazing stylist with us today. Uh, cone owner on online drone parts uh, supplier. Jenna Ogden put her page in. Thank you, Rick Hansen. Hello, Rick. Welcome to the broadcast today. Uh, Southern Marketing Company, Graphic Design. All of you are commenting because we are live. If I would have done this in a pre-recorded video content, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be blowing up the feed like this. And the point is, you're enjoying your time here. This is valuable to you. Other ways it's not. And that is what social media wants most, is they want you to be putting content out that is valuable to another human being that makes them feel like they're part of something, like they're in a community, mm -hmm. like they, they care about what you care about. I'm in a couple Facebook Live groups, and we're going to talk about groups before this broadcast is over today, but I'm in a Facebook Live group where just people nerd out about Facebook Live <laughs> stuff all the time, and I absolutely <laughs> love it. Like, it's constantly in my feed. Every time I log in, that group is going to show up because I'm the guy always typing and being a part of it. And it makes me feel like I'm part of something and it makes me come back to their platform over and over. So when you're thinking about what content you're going to put out, you have to ask yourself, is this making someone feel connected? Are they have a better chance of doing something with this? Or am I just posting this to post? Because when we do go into groups, I'm going to explain to you why I think Facebook has taken your business pages and kind of pushed them down a little. Uh, and again, because we'll go back to that consistent posting thing. Yeah, and uh, thanks, thanks for joining us, John. It's I'm John Davis Real Estate. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that 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 is one of the things is we started to kind of touch on it is that there's different demographics for each platform. Uh -huh. um, and we're gonna go over that today. Yeah, and and that's that's one thing that you really that that when you look at your insights it's really gonna make a huge difference because you'll know who you're talking to, how it's best, you know, how to best frame your messaging um, so that you're not just pushing out a bunch of content that nobody's going to engage with. Because I mean, mm -hmm. who, who out there has you know, been posting regularly and they're like, oh, well, no one ever likes my posts. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff I hear time and time again. Well, nobody engages with my stuff. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. do you know who you're talking to? Who, yeah. Who's your audience? Are you? Are you posting the same thing on you know seven different social media channels? Yeah. Um, and once you go into your insights and really look to see who's there, who you're talking to, it makes such a difference. And even to back you up here, we have uh, Haley Everson. She says, insights are an amazing thing to review. So Haley, you're speaking our language, girl. As a social media manager, I encourage my clients to learn more about analytics and insights so that they can tailor their content. Yes. So that's what you may not know. You may not even know how to, you may have had a, a Facebook business page for five years. There are insights in there that's gonna give you an idea of who's engaging, what the age range is. Is it male or female? There are stuff that's available. When they're online. <laughs> yeah, when they're online, one of the best times to post and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So insights are amazing and we're not gonna go in depth about that today, but if you stay tuned with us through these future episodes, we will dive into the stuff because you know what you're doing here when you engage, you're letting us know the things you wanna learn mm -hmm. and we're gonna teach you. Um, so we're gonna go over to, to Sprout Social today and we're gonna start to give you some clear information about social media demographics, okay? So you may be wondering, where do I need to be? Where do I need to post? Who's there? We're gonna break this down for you today in a way that you're gonna understand with some imagery, okay? So um, this is for marketers, but this is gonna be crazy valuable to you. So where should you be? This is a good question for you before I go down even further. Where should you be? Where do you think the most pl popular platform is for you to be and why. And when we come back in a couple minutes, we're going to read off where you think you should be and why. And we're going to see if it correlates with some of this data we're going to show you today. Um, but let's talk about some of the Facebook demographics. Um, I'm going to bypass this first image to go to this image right here. Now, why is this important? So we want to know 
um, a couple things about our demographics. What we know about Facebook usage and the people that are using Facebook, 75% uh, of them are female and 63% are male. Now that means 75% of females do use Facebook and 63% of males do use Facebook as well. But let's look at these age ranges. Um, so if your target market is 13 to 17, um, it may not be <laughs> the best platform for you. And I think you know that. That's an easy one, right? We yeah, know younger populations. Yeah, TikTok. Go TikTok's to TikTok, a good spot, yeah. go to Snapchat, <laughs> go to Instagram still, even though Instagram has an aging population as well. But what I know about, what I love about this is 30 to 49. The reason I spend a lot of my time on Facebook is because I know 79% of 30 to 49 year olds are spending time on Facebook. What do I know about 30 to 49 year olds? They've probably been a little more established in their career. They've probably been through some of the hard stuff in life. They probably have some expendable income that they're willing to spend on maybe what you have or sell. Um, and that's where the big bulk of this middle range is, 18 to 29 and 20 to, or 30 to 49, and even up in the 50 to 64s, okay? Um, and this also gives us income. So people who are making 75,000 or more, 74% of those people are on Facebook. And, and that's a great point to bring up too, because again, if you're a realtor or you, you work in the home industry, this is the age group that typically are looking to buy a house. So, I mean, if you're putting your efforts out onto Facebook, mm -hmm. doing those virtual walkthroughs, um, connecting with your audience on Facebook and just showing up regularly, this is your ideal target audience. Yeah. And so let's go into the next po most popular platform, uh, in my opinion, um, which is Instagram. A lot of people, you know, it's, it's, it's typically the Facebook or Instagram battle, right? And, which is actually owned by Facebook. Uh, but we'll go into some others today. But as we can see, the numbers we're looking at here on screen right now is that this is, this is a much different graph, isn't it? Whoops. Um, we're seeing a, a lot at the higher numbers of people that are there and a lot when we get to 65 plus or even when we get to 50 to 64 or even 30 to 49, which was 79% on the Facebook platform, well, it's only 47% here. Um, we see that there's female, only 43% of females are actually on Instagram and only 31% are on males. And I don't mean only in a negative way. I know that might have sounded that way. I happen to be a Facebook live marketing expert, so maybe I do show a little bit. But anything you want to say about these numbers? I think that this is one of the platforms too, where in, especially again, once again, if you're in the home industry, it's such a visual platform. If you can go out there and show, there's you know, five different ways that you can show up on Instagram. So if you can show up through the grid, Instagram stories, Instagram reels, the, the new one, um, mm -hmm. Instagram live, and then IGTV. There's five different ways that you can provide valuable content to your audience on social media. Mm -hmm. And this, again, Instagram is, is mostly women and women are, are typically the ones that begin the house hunting journey. So if you're a realtor, Instagram would be a great spot for you to spend time because females who, who typically start the home buying venture are spending time there looking through the feed and engaging on that platform. Mm -hmm. And let's go to the third one, which is Twitter. Um, Twitter, as we see here, has you know much smaller usage too. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some numbers off of the top of my head because I know them to give you some perspective here. Uh, Facebook is the largest largest pond you can fish in. There are 2.4 billion monthly users. So every month, 2.4 billion people log into Facebook at least once. Okay, now the second place is Instagram, which is at one billion. So Instagram has about a 1 billion monthly user, meaning that at least once a month, 1 billion people log in every month. So Facebook itself is about double the, is over double the size of Instagram when it comes to a user base. So I, I say, you know, oftentimes when, when we want to get started, if we're going to fish, let's fish in the biggest pond. Yeah. <laughs> let's give our, let's get the most fish in there that we can possibly pull out. And from a monthly usage basis, Facebook is that much bigger. And then Instagram is a clear, uh, third place back here with only 21% Twitter, Twitter, I'm sorry, That's Twitter with only 21% <laughs> females and only 24% of males being on there and a much smaller as we see a uh, 32%, 38, none of these 79s or 80s that we see. So these are, these are statistics and data that are showing you that, that Facebook 
might not be dead. No. Uh, no. We, we know it might not be dead. We know all these, uh, you know, documentaries are coming out about <laughs> the social experiment. And what we do know, and Facebook admits it themselves, if you spend too much time on this thing and you're constantly just browsing, your happiness level will go down. We know that. Uh, I myself do social media detox. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like we, I got to get away from it sometimes. I take Sundays off <laughs> from social media. And I mean, tell, tell us in the comments what you guys have used for your business, which social media platform you found to be to have the most success. Yeah. Uh, have you been successful on Facebook? Have you been successful on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn? Where have you been able to find the most success for your business? Um, through social media outreach. Um, if you are watching on the replay, just make sure to hashtag replay and, and, mm -hmm. and let us know too, because we, we will be going back through and, and reading everything. Um, and yeah, if you want to keep posting your uh, business pages, I'm happy to go back through uh, at the end and, and take a look and see what your overall strategy is looking like. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll be happy to send you a free video audit. Totally. Uh, a couple of you people hopping on. Uh, Native Sons Hall, thank you for this information. Miranda McCollin, welcome today. Thank you for that smiley face. Uh, <laughs> any help for fundraising through social media for a nonprofit in 2021 would be greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, there's a lot you can do. And uh, any nonprofit typically is solving a big problem. Um, and, you know, what I want to say your biggest objective in 2021 should be is highlighting the stories that are happening in your life <laughs> in your nonprofit profit with video. Uh, that's going to be a key thing. Not only will you get quotes that you can then do social posts in the future about the human beings that are affected by your nonprofit, but highlighting those stories and those things that, that are the reason that your nonprofit exists is a really good place to start. Now, one thing that I've, that there are a number of different ways that you can be on social media. You can mm -hmm. have the, the personal profile, the business page, and then the group. Oh, we're going here. Yep. This is one of the questions we're like, has to be here. Yeah. What should you be using? Your personal profile, your business page, or your group? We had to talk about this. Yeah. And and I think that this is, we'll, we'll just use it for, for Facebook reasons right now. We'll just so, use it for Facebook. Yeah. Um, but this is where a lot of a lot of people, I, I, I just use it my, my personal profile for everything, or I, I only use, uh, I, I've never even heard of a group. And yeah. if you're not util utilizing Facebook groups yet for your business in some regard, you are missing out. I mean, there's a Goodbye. reason that so Facebook spent uh, who knows how much money for two, two Super Bowl ads. <laughs> yeah, and two years in a row. So yeah. you may not notice, but those are the only thing Facebook is spending money on is the power of groups. And they're encouraging people to become part of groups. And that tells you how they're going to be prioritizing things in their feet. Yeah, and, and that's and that's so important. to If, if Facebook is t doing ads and saying, join mm -hmm. groups, Mm -hmm. Do what Facebook says. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. th this is a great way for you to get outreach. Um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about groups and how you've been able to yeah. utilize them? Yeah, you know, it, it is one of the most important things. And I'll give you a little bit of insight. So as being a Facebook Live marketing expert, my job is to stay in tune, finger on the pulse of Facebook and what they're doing. Uh, they're always prioritizing things. We've always heard the word the algorithm. It's forever changing. We'll never have a full pulse on it. But it's changing <laughs> for purposes and reasons. Anything, I was talking to a scientist the other day, which I was so glad that I was. And I, I'll never get out articulately in my mouth what this person said. But this person talked about the power of getting anything as a next step into groups of mm -hmm. things that are alike. It, it happens with everything. When we're working with data, we get things, we get things that are similar yeah. in groups. What Facebook knows in order to survive, they need to start getting people into groups of people that care about what they deeply care about or what they're affected in life. For the people that are sharing, you're going to get some extra support today. Family <laughs> law. I didn't. I haven't looked if, if family law was your thing, but if it was your thing, uh, you know, you could have a Facebook group that could be like surviving the first three months of divorce. How to not get how to not get taken financially uh, in divorce. You could have a group that actually where people would come to actually be a part and learn from everybody in this group about the things that they did to survive this process, to make sure they weren't taken advantage of. And what you end up finding is a lot of people locking arms who have the same interest, maybe some people that went through it five years ago that are willing to be in the group and talk to people to be like, hey, this is what I did in my situation. Yeah. When these types of interactions happen, Facebook loves it, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, why is this important? So this group will say it is uh, put on by the law firm, and it'll say that right at the top. Now, what happens? People start to get curious. There is a phenomenon that I call that doesn't always sound right, but I call it Facebook stalking. 
And what I mean <laughs> is you've all been 20 to 30 profile pictures deep into somebody that you don't know, that you never met, that you'll never meet in your whole life. But for some reason, they did something that piqued your curiosity enough to go stalk that person, slide through their profile pictures, maybe at 11 o'clock at night, and get to know a little bit more about them. And that itself is a marketing touch on its own. So groups are what Facebook is actually, not only are they liking to get people in there, now they're also starting to show that content in the feed more, more relevantly. So if you were to take the exact same post, post it to your Facebook business page, and at the exact same time, yes. post it into your Facebook group and do nothing, same copy, same everything, the people in your group are more likely to see in their news feed that thing that happened from the group, not the thing that happened from the business page. So that's what the algorithm is. They're weighting things and choosing what are we going to yes. show in front of someone. Exactly. And, and that's it's a great way. Again, the algorithm, um, unfortunately, I mean, you, Facebook is a business and business pages have some of the lowest rank in the Facebook algorithm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and when I say lowest rank, I mean, let's say you have a thousand followers on your Facebook business page. Facebook organically, without if no one engages with it, is only going to push it out to between one and three percent of your audience, yeah. which okay, ten to thirty people are organically going to see that if no one engages. Yeah, and and that I mean that's something that can be super depressing, mm -hmm. but at the same time, that's where. Again, providing value for your clients, for your customers. Show them that that virtual walkthrough. You know, take them from the front step to, you know, to how far, how close they are to the local coffee shop that mm -hmm. you can walk to the local coffee shop. I mean, take them on that tour, take them on that venture, bring your your community in, mm -hmm. and through groups, you're able, you're you're already going to be higher on the, the algorithm. Mm -hmm. You can share the same content to it, but I mean, mm -hmm. if you're if you're in groups, you're going to already be light years ahead of where you are just in a traditional business page. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm not saying to not have a Facebook business page. I think that you should still have one. Have to but have one. I don't think you can't not have one. You have to. It's like the website yeah. of Facebook. Yeah. You have to have a website. A website. And you have to have a Facebook page. Well, and that's one of the things too. If people might not realize this, but Facebook is one of the most uh, crawled websites out there through Google. So Google still crawls Facebook for SEO purposes. Mm -hmm. So if you're pushing out good content that's rates on your SEO, mm -hmm. you're going to rank in Google. Um, mm -hmm. So again, bringing in new clients and, and new customers. Yeah, and then let's talk about our personal profile. It is still a tool to use. Both Katie and I did share this content to our personal profile today because I have not just family members, but colleagues that get to see a little bit more about my life. Not only do I touch them when I post a picture about my kids and my family, but then I also touch them with this video today to say, hey, Peek, peek, just a reminder, I'm still there to help you when the time comes that you want to make that decision and really pull the trigger on Facebook Live video marketing or video marketing in general. And Katie's putting that little peek, peek, like, <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm still here. I'm working. You're seeing me. Because this is what, whenever I coach new clients, because I also coach individuals on how to do this, the first thing I teach them to do is be a social listener. You have got to be so in tune on how you are actually engaging with content on your, your YouTube, or I mean on Facebook, because this is one of the biggest identifiers of what your habits are like. Because what I know is that I don't stop on things for long. When I do, <laughs> it's really got to get me excited, and then I go in and I kind of watch it. But what I do know about video and the power of video is when you scroll your Facebook feed, here's a little fun game for you and a challenge. The next time you are mindlessly scrolling your Facebook page and you see a video and it's of a human being doing a video, I don't want you to stop. I want you to continue to go by, don't stop, but then ask yourself, after you've gone through and you saw that video for a, a millisecond, did it remind you who that person was and what they do? Because with video, you'll be surprised how that impact lasts, mm -hmm. how you saw their face talking, you're like, oh, that so-and-so is so-and-so. Yeah. These are marketing touches. And, and Jenna had a, had a great question. Would you suggest, Jenna Ogden says, uh, would you suggest posting different things on your business page versus in a group? And yes and no. So, I mean, like, I think that this groups are a great way mm -hmm. to engage um, really, really authentically. You can show up through through live video, mm -hmm. but you can ask questions um, You and, and answer questions. And there's really a lot more conversations that mm -hmm. happen in groups. Um, it's not just, you know, 
which I don't think you should do anyways, like on a business page where sell, sell, sell. But if you ask a question on your Facebook business page, remember, it's only going to be seen between one and 3% of your audience. So if you want to, if like you're trying to find out who your ideal client is or who your ideal customer is, this is a great way in groups to ask a question, see who responds and what their answers are. And I mean, there's so, I mean, you can u- utilize these things for, for future blog posts, for future webinars, um, different different ways to, to create an online course. Like, so if you have like a question and an engaged community through groups, which again, groups, you're going to have a more engaged audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a great way to find out what your ideal client, ideal customer has questions on. Yeah. And then, you know, when, when we talk about live video, and again, I know I keep going back to that, but I'm a live video expert. <laughs> what you've noticed right now is I just uh, I just took a poll, okay? This is one of the advantages of using Facebook Live video. Start to get a little bit, to start to get to know a little bit more about your audience. You saw me just put up a poll, whether you're on your mobile or whether you're watching this on your computer, something's going to pop up that says, do you have a Facebook group? And this gives you all the ability to vote on whether you have a Facebook group or not. And I'm seeing actively that two of you have said yes. Um, and this is a great way to start doing these real live engagement things with people. And it's different for every business, but these are some of the tools you can use to start to get a little bit, know a little bit more. I want to know how many of you are using groups. I want to know how many of you are actually utilizing this tool. And if you're not, this may give us some areas to to grow. So, and I I think too, like, so I use groups, um, for my, for my own, uh, networking. So I do a lot of Mm -hmm. podcasting. Um, and I use it for finding out, finding new potential guests to come on my podcast. Um, if you have not listened, it is called Rocky Mountain Marketing. But um, it, I, so I use that to find new potential guests and also to guest on other podcasts. So, I mean, like, there's a group out there for everything. And if you, you, there's, you don't need to just go in it for just your straight, just your business. Um, joining a group that makes sense for your business and providing value, commenting on the post, joining the conversation. Again, it comes back to that statement. It's called social media. Be social, Be social. on it. And you can join these things as, as your business and still like, hey, you know, we're I'm, I'm looking for podcast guests and, and, and create those authentic relationships through social media in, in a way that you never even dreamed like that possible because again yeah. when, when I got started in social media this was back in the MySpace days not to date myself too <laughs> <Hashtag> much <laughs> and I, this is again like it MySpace opened up the doors for how we were able to connect with people that we might not have ever dreamed about connecting with mm-hmm. and it not that has not changed mm-hmm. all these new social media platforms have come out um, and kind of taken over since MySpace. Mm-hmm. I, um, it is still around, just just so you know, but I mean, I don't think anyone uses it. Um, but it's opened all these doors for so, a, such a bigger audience and so many more clients and so many more relationships if you're social on it. So create those authentic relationships and conversations with your audience. Yeah. Um, and then I want to start talking a little bit about the power of live video. Is yeah, that cool? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, here I am saying live video. Again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, I had another uh, another article. And again, we'll post these articles in the comments. Actually, I'm going to post that first article in the comments uh, right now for you. So that first article that we showed off uh, that showed all the demographics, that's in the article from Next Step Social Communications right now. And I'm going to post, since I'm posting, before I even show you this one, because I know you're going to love it, I'm going to post it as well. Um, but again, you may be asking yourself, why would I use live video? Why? I don't, I don't get it. I'm not good at it. Why would I do it? And today I'm going to hope to get you over the hump. Because the one thing getting in the way of you doing live video is you. You know, you care. It's the fear of doing live video. It's, mm-hmm. will I look good? Will I sound good? Are people going to think I'm not professional? Am I going to get, <laughs> you know, caught up on my words? What's going to happen? But uh, what I will say is Facebook prioritizes live video in the algorithm more than any other thing that you could possibly be doing. Mm-hmm. So uh, today I'm going to show you a big, a big study that Agora Pulse did that it compares engagement on Facebook Live versus uploaded videos or videos that you just recorded, you uploaded it and then put it out. It was great. You got to say into the camera 65 <laughs> times and you took take number 64 and like that was it. Uh, okay, I'm done. Well, now and, now and my work is, day's done. This is the thing too that I think a lot of people don't realize is that you don't need to have this. You don't no, need to have don't. this. Um, I and, started and, with this. And and that's and 100%. that's exactly. I mean like go live on yeah. Again, I keep going back to the realtor or, or home organizer. Mm-hmm. Go live and say, hey, just started um, you know, our, our open house at 
one, two, three Main Street, mm -hmm. you know, be sure to check, come on by. I mean, like, you can do a virtual walkthrough really fast. Hope you all come on by. You know, oh, it, it, mm -hmm. I mean, it can be off the cuff and, you know, it doesn't need to be all this, but going live is going to help you so much increase your reach. Going live. So let's talk about a few things to highlight in this article. Um, I love this. These are two statistics that I share all the time. Facebook Lives are viewed three times longer than pre-recorded content. And Facebook Live, people are more likely to comment. They're 10 times more likely to comment and interact, which is, again, I want to remind you, that's what Facebook wants you to do, create content that's engaging. They're 10 times more likely to get comments if you actually hit that Live button. So we could have used... We could have easily done this pre-recorded, but we wouldn't have got the same results. So here's the hypothesis on why they did this study. So Facebook Live video will have a higher amount of engagements, which are reactions, comments, and shares, as well as reach and uploaded videos. So this is what they went out to see, okay? What they did is they tested their page and they tested another really popular page called Geeks Life, um, which is a guy named David who's a great streamer as well. He'll teach you a lot if you want to learn some more. Um, but this is what they ended up finding out. Um, so Facebook Live videos with Agora Pulse, their reach was 2,206% higher. Reactions were 17, comments 19.29, and shares 3.43. 3, 3 um, and upload videos, reach was only, so we have reach here of 2,206 as opposed to an upload of video only 685. Now, if these numbers aren't working for you, I'm going to show you an image um, that's going to help you. What they ended up finding out while all this was said and done was this. When they combined both pages, what they found is that Facebook Live reactions were 240% higher. So the fact that you actually just hit the high, you hit the live button, you've got a 240% 240 chance higher that somebody's going to do a reaction, a like, um, a heart, something like that. Um, it's 1,400% higher that they're going to comment. So there's 1,400% more comments, meaning they're coming in, and shares were 427 225.27 percent higher. Yeah. Katie, what does that mean to you? Um, I need to go live. Yeah, you need <laughs> to go live, and you need to get over the hump. And you know, one of the things I love how you talked about podcasting. Uh, okay, so we'll come back to this in a second. One of the things that I teach all my coaching clients is I call it social hacking. Okay, mm -hmm. what are podcasts? Okay, podcasts are great; they're full of information. But what are they? They're two people who are using their platforms. Okay, <laughs> Facebook Live Video Marketing, Next Step Social Communications. We're hacking each other's platforms, adding value by pairing up, and then I'm in this. I'm going to share this everywhere. Yeah. Right? Are you in this? Uh, yeah, I'm going to share You're going to share everywhere. this everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be getting Katie in front of my audience. Katie's going to be getting me in front of her audience. We are sideline partners. I am not a social media manager. Would I? Would, would Katie want to be sitting by Danny Colella's social media next up communications <laughs> no. and talking about the same things and competing? No. What we choose are sideline people, people that support our industry. And one of the best ways to start your live video strategy is to do an interview. You know, and, and a great way, again, going back to the home industry, if you're a realtor, sit down with one of your mortgage lenders every Monday, go mm -hmm. live and talk about the latest rates or latest, uh, you know, sale that you guys were able to, to do together. Mm -hmm. That's a great live that you can do. And again, you're, you're teaming up with an industry yeah. that makes sense. Um, I, I, also, if you're a, a realtor, mm -hmm. you could team up and, and go to different local shops in your, you know, your area. So if you're, you know, we're, we're here in Colorado. So let's say you're um, a, a, uh, a golden a realtor like specializes in the golden area. You can go to a different local shop every week, uh, go live there. And again, you're getting in front of another audience, which aligns with your brand because you're the realtor of golden um, mm -hmm. and, and get to know these local businesses and give your audience a chance to see what it's like living in golden, what it's like uh, going to this local coffee shop or, or this local mm. uh, you know, retailer. Hey, they, they have a a farmer's market every Saturday, you know, go and talk to these people. And you know, it's, it's only going to help you and expose your reach. Totally. And I'm going to use uh, Bell Miller. I hope you're still with us today, but you did post that you're with the Western St. Charles Chamber of Commerce. Your 2020 live video marketing campaign is to biweekly, every other week, interview a member from your Chamber of Commerce <sighs> in live video about the service that they offer. Yes. What is your job, Belle? Your job is merely to come up with the power of threes. Everything that I do is three, everything. 
The power of three, which means that you're going to come up with three strategic questions that you're going to ask to each of your guests that support their brand. So let's say, you know, how does your business solve your customers' problems? Bam, Bell, you say it, and then you're setting your guest up who can talk days about the things that they know to talk about what they already know. And at the end of the day, you're getting your Chamber of Commerce, some live video content, and then what is Joe, who you interview, going to do? He's going to share it out to his friends because you're interviewing him and talking about him, and then bam, in 2021, bi-weekly, you bring in somebody new and you have created and now can execute a pretty easy live video exposure marketing campaign, law firm, past clients that you've really helped and you've stayed in touch with and they were profoundly impacted by the service that you had. Come on and have them talk exactly. about how, what did you think this process was going to be like? What did you find this process was actually like? Exactly. And I mean, you can do this for so many industries. Um, it, it, it's finding what aligns with your brand that makes sense. Um, I mean, so for, for me, I'm not going to go to an equestrian ranch and, and, and do a, a live with them. I mean, like, it, it makes sense for you to align with the right partners. And pa like he said, past customers, if you're, again, realtor, you can go and, and talk, have someone on that. You just help them buy their first home. How, I mean, because er, mm -hmm. that, that's if you've ever bought a home or someday you'd like to buy a home, yeah. that, that's some content that you're audience will like to hear about and it's, it's again you're going to share it with their audience mm -hmm. um same basis as, as what i do with, with the podcast so. totally and all of you have myths in your industry without a doubt so law form uh real estate agents myths uh of course we know real estate agents i think you guys and lenders i think you get a little slapped in the hand when you start uh <laughs> giving advice and stuff like that but at the end of the day there are myths about your industry uh is it ever a here's a here's a here's a topic of a live show for a real estate agent, okay? Is it ever a good idea to get a, what is it called, an arm? What is the- An arm, yeah, What is the one arm, that fluctuates? An arm. Is it ever a good idea to get an arm rated mortgage? I know I'm not using that verbiage right, but what's appealing <laughs> about that is that people are wondering, is there a reason? Is there a time? I don't know <laughs> what that answer is, and the, and the answer might be no, never do it. But at the end of the day, the way you type that, is there ever a good reason to do an ARM uh, mortgage for instant rate. And that's gonna drive people in and you're gonna add some value on, here are three reasons why I think you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, here are three reasons why, you know, here's the two extenuating circumstances that it might be a good idea. You're a short, I don't know your industry, but you're a short term <laughs> buyer. You plan to be there 10 years and you're gonna, you know you're gonna leave because this is what you do. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're adding value to your industry. now. We're not going to go into depth about this, but the ability to repurpose that content, the ability. So what you don't know, what most of you might not know about live video is every live video you do, I'm going to get a raw copy of this. I'm Everything we're talking about here, I'm going to get the video file raw. And what I can then do is we can upload that to Facebook. I mean, we can upload that to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then me and Katie can shoot out an email blast. Yep. Hey, exactly. check out this video. Even if you're not on Facebook, here's a mm -hmm. YouTube link. Check out this video. Go watch it. Add some value. Mm -hmm. What I can also do is we had a lot of great value here. I mean, we dropped some bombs, didn't we? It yeah. was good. Oh, yeah, this is really good. And this we, was we, fun. It, I mean, like, we, I can't believe we only have 10 minutes left. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that this is where, um, you know, we, we want to try and do this more often for you guys um, mm -hmm. and answer some of the questions that you have. So, I mean, if you... You know, what what is one of the biggest struggles that you've had with social media, mm -hmm. um, or or is it is it going live? Is it video? Have, had, are you afraid to just get in front of the camera? Mm -hmm. Tell us in the comments. Um, mm -hmm. I think that I also wanted to touch on uh, you know growing growing your your business here with with different uh, social media strategy and live events. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that you're, you're you are the live expert here. Yeah, so. we are we are doing something um, unique today uh, that might be new to you, but we actually scheduled an event. Okay, you've all probably scheduled an event to, before, but what happened within the last you know two months or so is Facebook added a live video feature to this, mm -hmm. so you can now create a live video within an event. Now we are live today within our event, and Katie was so kind today <laughs> to do all the hard work to set this up, which is stuff I don't that's, love to do. That's, say that's my jam. That's so, her jam. Yeah, that's that. what she loves. <laughs> so she set this up. So she set it up on her business page as well. So we are live today in the event, but we are also live on Next Step Social Media at the same time, mm -hmm. um, and why? Why is this an advantage? Because there is no way to advertise, to do a Facebook ad for a live video. Mm -hmm. They don't let you boost it. They don't let you do any of that stuff. Yep. This is a workaround. We were able to advertise this. I think we put maybe a hundred bucks behind this. 
to get to more people that could be potential clients of ours or could add value to their network or maybe share us with a friend of theirs because uh, that's one of the most powerful things we'll ask you to do at the end is hit the share button mm -hmm. and help this get to more people that might need it. Um, but we use this event as a feature to advertise and now we're live in the event and I am using a third party streaming software that gives us all these great graphics but you could go live with just your phone at the same time and start adding some value within the event. Exactly and uh, again I'm going back to those in the home industry. This is a great way so when you do have that open house starting go live before it schedule it as an event on your facebook page on your facebook business page and that way you can go live and it get some excitement drawn up around it yeah. and if people are like you can ask questions beforehand okay well what are some of the biggest like struggles that you've had um mm -hmm. or uh, what, what are some of the questions that you have about this neighborhood mm -hmm. that way when you go live you can answer all their questions and uh, you know get excitement around this open house so people can see it mm -hmm. especially too with with COVID and everything that's happened in, in 2020, people are, are buying houses without ever setting foot in it because mm -hmm. of video. And if you're able to do the, the live streaming, the live virtual walkthrough, mm -hmm. this is what's gonna make a big difference for, for you guys. With that being said, I do work with some realtors. My only pet peeve is if that's all you do. If all you do for live is just go live in your, yeah. in your you know, what I want you to understand about that is that is primarily, and the only purpose you're doing that is to benefit you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You gotta, you know, I don't care what industry you're in, I don't care if it's real estate, law firm, whatever. If you're in a position where your live videos are all about benefiting you, you're doing it wrong, mm -hmm. okay? So you can do those open houses, I agree with that. That's a great strategy, it's easy. Don't make that your only strategy no. because it's all about you. What are you. Why are you doing it? So you sell a house. You're not doing it to solve a problem or create content that's valuable for somebody that may be researching a house. You know, you guys know, all of you in your business, and I have the same issue, is I know too much. <laughs> I know too much that I can't even take it down to an understandable level for half of you. And I get that. But, but the point is, you need to work with a power partner, somebody that's beside you to say, Katie, what, 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 what is it you don't get about my business? Yeah. It, What's confusing to you? Well, and this and is then what, take that yes. and match your content. Yes. Teach that. Yes, exactly. And, and again, like you're saying, like, don't just do the, the open houses. You know, that, again, you, that's where going and aligning with other community members, mm -hmm. doing those lives with them and, and talking. Because, I mean, that's great for anyone that's interested in the area it's great for the business owner themselves because they're getting you know footage on your live channel align with those those partners and again in the back of your mind whenever you post something to social media think about what value is my ideal client or customer going to get from this post um, I'm, I'm not saying to write a, a blog with every image that you put out there but think about that think about okay so I get what I'm saying um, is, is my ideal client going to walk away from clicking the, the three dots or the see more and be like, oh, I am so glad that I follow Katie Brinkley. You know, just try and keep that in the back of your mind um, with all of your posts and set up a clear and consistent strategy behind your social media, behind your live videos. Yeah. And I'm going to put a quick reference to a software that I think is epic. Uh, for anybody who wants to get started with live video, it's called StreamYard, uh, StreamYard.com. Fantastic tool, one of the easiest tools that you will use to go live. And not only is it cool, but it allows you to multi-stream. Yeah. You could go live to your business page, to your Facebook profile, and to your group, and to YouTube, all at the same time when you use this service. So I wanted to put a little nugget out there of value. And, you know, as we start to wrap up, you know, it's important that we, we talk about what next steps are for those of you that want to learn deeper. For those of you that are like, Katie, you're speaking my language. I wish I knew more about what it is you do and you can point me in the right direction. Well, where can they go to learn a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, so I am a social media strategist. I offer done for you social media. So I mean, if someone says, you know what, I don't get social media. I don't want to get social media. I just want to get the, <laughs> reap the rewards of social media because I see how valuable it is. Yeah. I do offer that. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that's something that's been really beneficial during these these COVID um, kind of shutdowns. Yeah. We've had we've been given the gift of time, and with this <laughs> gift of time, I've been able to teach a lot of uh, realtors, home builders, uh, contractors how to do social media the right way, how to optimize all of their business pages, um, all of their accounts, and develop a clear content strategy. How to use hashtags, how to find the right type of images. So I offer both that and, and the, the Done For You social media. Right now I have a free video training that is available if you go to katiebrinkley.com. Um, 
You can get a free video training. And this week only, I am offering um, a bonus gift of a content calendar template. So if you've been spinning your wheels and trying to think about, I don't know what to post, um, here are 24 prompts to start posting on social media the right way and start getting out the right content. So katiebrinkley.com for that free video training and that bonus calendar this week only. Love it. And if you're interested in learning more about Facebook Live, the benefits, how to use it, what platforms to use, what equipment to use, can your phone do it, and can you add other pieces of equipment to your phone, then you can do two things for me. One, you can join. I have a free group. Okay. Uh, I call it Facebook Live. Start here, learn here, grow here. I'll put it in the comment section when we're all done. So you can click that and you can be a member of our group. You can ask questions. You can let people know where you're struggling. Uh, I just did a uh, review last week on this Rode uh, podcaster piece of equipment that we're using today that makes us sound so good. And I'm also <laughs> going to put in a link uh, at dannycolella.com that has my mobile live video starter kit. So if you want to learn everything you need to know about using your mobile phone to go live, including equipment that interfaces with it, then you can download my free starter kit and I show you exactly what you need to do. For instance, did you know the only thing that will interrupt a live video on your phone is an actual phone call? So you do need to turn your phone into do not disturb mode or into airplane mode so that when, and connect to Wi-Fi so that when you do go live, you're not going to get interrupted by your mom or your friend who's calling you. <laughs> that's, These little, that's how it always seems to go, right? That's how it yeah. always seems to go. They never call you, and then as soon as you hit the live button and you're nervous about it, then that happens. It's so like, It's like that commercial where the guy is like the, the James Bond guy, and he's like trying to jump across buildings, and then, Mom? Uh, no, mom, now is not a good time. It's not a good time. <laughs> so that mobile live video starter kit will get you started in the right direction, help you eliminate some of those mistakes that you don't want to make to make yourself look or sound unprofessional. And that kit is free to you just to download and to use as a resource to kind of grow your business from there. So uh, as we wrap up, um, we want to thank you today for your time, for your energy, for being a part of our community, um, engaging with us. All of you that dropped comments, you did more than what you think today. You made this live a community live and we thank you for that yeah thank you so much for joining us and this was this was a lot of fun i hope you guys got some value out of it got some tips and realized the benefit of just getting over your fear of live video and just doing it if you if you need some more motivation join danny's group um, and if you need some help with your social media you're ready to tackle it and take it on get in touch with me katiebrinkley.com and I think that we should do this again. I mean, if, if yeah, you, if you guys enjoyed easy. this, I, I, I hope that you guys uh, will join us again for another live like this. And, and mm -hmm. you can get some more knowledge on, on social media and all that it has to, to offer you and your business. Yeah. So with that, we're on our way out. <laughs> and we thank you for your time today. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.